Scotiabank believes in and promotes advancement, development, education, as well as the sharing of stories and ideas amongst each other. We are committed to this and I am thrilled to announce to you today that we will be offering an internship to one of you here today. He said come in once a week and volunteer and do the two, three, four a.m. newscasts, tape them, and he'd come in at eight o'clock in the morning and I and he'd play them back and he'd critique them for me. So the, the, the thing is is that it was ironic that the one the harshest letter was the one the person I ended up approaching. So I learned not to take no for an answer. So then I tried to get into TV. I worked in radio for a while. I went to Chum Radio, and I thought, like, my destination, which I think it's important to have a destination, because if you don't know where you're going, you end up somewhere else. And I am the queen of the cliche. So on February 17th, 1993, after being at Global for a few years, was uh, a milestone in my career. I broke the story about uh, the arrest of Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Probably took 10 years off my life, just the stress from it. And I learned so much from that experience. Uh, I was never the smartest guy in my class. I was never in the top 50% of marks of people in my class. That is a true story. You can ask these guys. I am not self-deprecating myself. That is the facts. I thought, well, geez, you know, my B average is probably not going to be good enough to get me to medical school. So I started working harder and harder at school and gradually um, did better and better in school. But I have in a file folder at my parents' house 56 letters of rejection. Um, many of them are multiple, just the date changed. So I went from a guy who couldn't get into medical school, who was told by a guy who was now a prominent chief of surgery uh, at a downtown hospital, you won't make it. And a year later, I was on the phone with the most prestigious surgical program in North America telling them that, thanks guys, I think it would be fun, but it's not for me. I finished at York University, BA in political science, nothing to brag about. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, it was a great experience for any of you in the university. The experience is, you don't learn, you're not learning a skill. Less than a year later, took over the campus club, uh, created 23 new clubs across the province for the Ontario Young Liberals. Uh, six months after that, became president of the Ontario Young Liberals, raised money to run that campaign, uh, was acclaimed. A month after that, or around the same time, became president or vice president of external affairs of the York Federation of Students at York University. Uh, a month after that, I got a job to be executive assistant to a, a metro councillor in the city of Toronto. So it was really interesting once I decided to get involved in politics. It was a bit of, you know, I'm not too sure what to do. And then once I figured out how it worked, or at least I thought how it worked, I just jumped in hook, line, sinker. And three years ago, the person who was working on that couldn't find someone to help him raise money. So I like projects that seem challenging. And uh, my company worked on the project. Less than a year raised him his development money he was looking for, about five million. And from a very early age, in turn, I worked for his construction company in the summers. So a lot of my childhood was very much left brain oriented. Um, even coming up here this morning, I had a lot of memories. Because um, a, a lot of the subdivisions that I worked on were actually in Woodbridge. So. Uh, a lot of coffee way too early in the morning, probably for a 12 year old, and uh, a lot of veal sandwiches at lunchtime. I firmly believe, and like a lot of people do, that we're all born into this world as a creative being. We all have that creative gene when we come out of our mother's womb. Um, and, and it's not hard to see this and improve it. If you think about back to, to kindergarten, you know, you did finger painting, you did, um, you know, you had incredible imagination. Told imagination stories with your friends and at school and then maybe grade one and grade two you you would draw these pictures and no matter how bad they were you brought them home and your parents would hang them up on the fridge and this idea hits me to not make a video but to do this thing in Toronto where I would somehow take an acoustic guitar and bus you know we've all seen the buskers in the subways and on the streets of Toronto I would bus the streets of Toronto and try to raise $30,000 in one day 
in the hopes of building a res uh, or rebuilding a school in Congo. More child has done many of these. So, you know, I partnered with them, and actually the year before that, my wife and I wrote, we raised the money, $30,000, it took a whole year. So I had this crazy idea, you know, get out there and put myself out there and see if I can raise the money. 